Hello, I'm Paul Miller, senior photographer and writer with Bullseye.com. We're here on location in Cape Town, South Africa, on the set of Death Race 3. I'm with Luke Goss, who also plays Frankenstein here on uh, this uh, Death Race 3 film. So tell me about your character development from the Death Race 2, where it seemingly perished at the very end. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's actually, this movie for me personally, I, I read the screenplay, I've seen the toys, the locations, the sets, it's... Uh, it's, a, it's certainly an evolution from my point of view. I think dramatically, character-wise on that level, it's really been plumped up. But um, the perishing of my character clearly was maybe uh, not as accurate as people may have thought in the previous movie, because here I am. And the movie tied up quite, you know, realistically. People knew that Frankenstein was still alive. They just didn't know where it was heading. And this movie is very, very, very clearly the next step from that moment. When people see... Death Race 2, when my character is racing as Frankenstein, they see me racing my vehicle in the, in the film. You don't know where that's heading. And this is a really, I think, really inventive and clever twist to where that heads. And, and the good thing about this film is that we're using Africa as Africa. All right. Um, and that's the only thing I can give away as far as uh, story because I don't want to ruin the plot. But it, it really is a smart move because the, I think the movie's really evolved. And I think, of, for me personally, of the three movies I've seen, including the one we're making, this is really a standalone kind of feel from the story. So uh, I think it's uh, bigger and better than I would have hoped for. Well, it seems like you have a bigger and better set. Tell me about where we're at here. How, how does this set here uh, play into the, uh, into the script? This is the quarry. It's the quarry start line. It's basically, this is like, there's a, a facility in Africa and the races start and it's different legs of, this, of, of the race. But each leg starts from this point. These guard towers are actually quite realistically positioned all around us. Mm -hmm. um, these concrete guard points, guard towers positioned all around the race. And this is where the race pretty much kicks off every time we start the new race sequence. Well, it seems like this is kind of a, a car, uh, off-road car lover's role uh, come true here. Um, you actually get to drive these cars on these sets and these at, at speed, is that correct? Um, I, I do. I, there's a, a couple of people at Universal wish I didn't. But... Um, on the previous movie, you know, I had to go through a kind of little drive training session with the stunt guys, and uh, you know, I guess I've managed to drive just well enough to be allowed to get into the toys. I mean, it would be a great shame, wouldn't it, to, to do a movie like this and not to get to drive them? I don't know how many of the cars to drive them, but I know for sure that I get to drive my vehicle, and it's an absolute beast. It's an absolute beast. So it's got a lot of horsepower. Yeah, well, it's an actual trophy truck conversion. Yes. So it's a, com a conversion of a car that's already huge, like a trophy mm -hmm. truck, and then turned into something that's very appropriate for this story. And it still has the Frankenstein signature colors and all the good stuff, but it's, uh, it's, it's very cool. Well, having Katrina as your uh, love interest must uh, make uh, your job a little uh, easier as well. Yeah, she's also my co-driver, and also within the story, she's somebody that I love very much. Um, although I can't, at a certain stage of the story, I can't really let her know that, but um, yeah, she's very good to look at for sure. Now, I'm, you, I'm not the only one who thinks that, so I've heard. <laughs> <laughs> Tell us about your stunt work. I hear you do most of your own stunt work, is that correct? Yeah, on this one, on the previous one, and because of the... I did my own fighting in the previous movie, and because of that, I don't have a stunt double in this film for my fights. And uh, I have some great stunt driver doubles in this film who are just wonderful guys and also great drivers, but I do some my own driving. and I'm just a big kid, and I know Rule, the director of this movie, Rule Renee, would hate it if he couldn't get in the passenger seat and, and do some shooting of me in, the, in, in actually in the vehicle at speed. So um, with, the, with the car, I get a lot of help, um, but with the fighting, I do it all myself. So I, I'm a big kid, so I mean, I, w I wouldn't want it any other way. What would you say is the most difficult part of your role? Uh, I think the makeup, as far as every day doing the, doing the scarring and then having to put the racing suit on. Out of all, both, I have two costumes in this, uh, in this movie, and the, the racing suit, with the leather cow and the mask, with the scarring, um, it's kind of it's tough. Uh, I haven't shot the fight scene yet, but the, there's a section of the fight scene where I have the mask on. So I'll be fighting in Africa with makeup, a racing suit, a leather cow, and a mask. So that's going to be a challenging couple of days, but um, you know it's worth it. Keeps keeps the fans happy, and uh, I think they should know that it's me doing it. Otherwise, right. you know, there was no, that's uh, important. Absolutely. Place. Yeah, I, I want that as a as a fanboy and a movie goer. And uh, I think they deserve exactly the same. Okay, great. Well, we appreciate your time. We're in, uh, our readers in Bullseye are very much looking forward to the release of the motion picture. Thank you so much for coming all this way. Pleasure. Thank you. Be well, my friend. Thank you.